Now this is just your stock factory filter here. Sometimes the O-ring comes off there. You don't see that too often, but. Now we're gonna be going back with a, a, a early style filter that flows a lot more fluid, a lot better uh, filter. Now we showed, everything we're putting in this unit uh, was showed in the earlier part of the video. Now you can see here how we have the later version uh, governor pressure uh, sensor and we have our factory governor pressure solenoid. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and grab our band struts here. Remember the a video here a few back, uh, they were totally missing in the tranny when we took it apart. The band was in there wrapped around the drum, but these two pieces were missing. After a rebuild, he wondered why it didn't have second gear. So, well, here we have our accumulator for our intermediate. Now, our Transgo kit will come with a firmer spring here. Okay, we'll get over here and get this valve body apart a little bit and do some explaining on it real quick. We're gonna unlock our sensor push on the little lever right there and un unplug it. This one here the same way, you can kind of pull up on that and unplug it. Now our shift transgo kit uh, will come with a plate that goes under here. Uh, that way uh, we can't flood the governor pressure sensor and, and blow it up. So they do come with a plate that goes uh, between here and the gasket and the valve body. You'll see it in the instructions. Pretty simple. Now this is a special little bolt right here. It lets this kind of pivot around. Uh, that way you can get it in here and you don't break it off. So it gives you a little bit of room there to play with. No, it is special. here. Okay, we'll get down in here and see if our overdrive accumulator spring is broken. A lot of times these come in broken. Nope, not broken. Still there. Now our transgo kit, of course, will come with uh, three springs that go in here and a few other modifications that you have to take off and do here. putting a spacer for the filter on here you'll be using this bolt back and then the uh, spacer for your filter will go in these two here so if you will be using that bolt back the other two you will not this bolt is shorter than all the rest of them you can see now some of the uh, ones will come with a long bolt here too so don't freak out when you see that because I have seen them come in the door that way and they come in the door that way from the factory not by somebody else messing with it so pretty simple now these bolts are your alignment bolts these two right here you want to get these started in uh, get them all started but these two I tighten down first and then I work my way from the middle to the out to torque them pretty simple See our solenoid assembly here. Got your temp sensor in here. They do have filters on them right here to keep the trash out of them. You can see. Now your overhaul kit will come with a new gasket. 
and a screen's built into the gasket so if you want to clean this off and you do use this back if it's not leaking fluid in here which 90 percent of them are uh, you can just put that on there so and we have a check fall right here it's a little tiny one but it does exist throw it in there now we're going to look here just to verify that this ain't no 48 re your transgo kit's going to ask you that question to, if there's going to is there a hole right here now this does not have a hole so it is not a 48 re now you can also uh, your plate's going to come uh, where you need to modify a couple holes here this is your second gear feed to your band now we like to enlarge it just a little bit the kit doesn't tell you to do that but we like just a little bit firmer shift in second than uh, what this gives it but if you look here this is your third gear feed here and your third gear feed here look how big this here this one is and this one's shrunk so if you left this one alone and you enlarge this one you're going to firm up third because they're controlling the fluid through diff two different holes see now your new plate that you put on here you're going to have to drill both of them read the instructions it'll tell you if you want to go just a little bigger you can but remember, bigger isn't always better. So. Now you want to look here. Uh, your plate's going to also, why Transgo also supplied your plate, is because this thing is a check ball plate eat and do. Here, let me tell you. And you can see here, this re reverse check ball is almost beat plumb through the plate. So this plate basically is runt. So... If you notice, we have metal check balls. You can put the rubber style in there. Your new plate's going to repair that. But like I say, all the modifications are going to be done to your new plate, not this one here. Your overhaul kit's also going to come with a little bit different style filter. It's not going to be this style. It's going to be a cone-looking filter. Now we have our overdrive and our lockup valves here. You can see how dirty all this stuff is. This stuff's got to be cleaned very well. And if you notice, let me try to knock this fluid out of there. We've got three holes. See that little tiny hole? That little tiny hole? That little tiny hole. You better make sure there ain't no trash in them. Make sure them hole, three holes are free. Your shift kit will come with a, a converter feed. A spring here I believe uh, just different things you're gonna have to be doing to this part too in your shift kit you come over here you can see we have all of our rubber balls here this one's gonna be a little bit bigger the rest of them are the same size now your shift kit is also going to come with a bullet looking thing here and you're gonna leave the check ball out Okay, we're going to get in here and just take this thing all the way apart. Now this is your pressure regulator spring here. This is your lockup control valve here. It's a four land, one, two, three, four. They make a three land. Uh, this valve body isn't that, So, but I just want to let you know they do make a three land that cause you do no modifications to. Now this valve here, we do grind, come in here and grind a little bit on the valve. I'll go do that real quick if y'all got time. Kind of give you an idea. See, let me grab my glasses real quick. I don't want nobody getting on me for not wearing my glasses. This is real easy to do. It's just you don't want to go too far because then you can mess things up. But you can see here how I put that little nick in there. And it's on the land that's already got like a groove around it. You can kind of see it right there all the way around. The others don't have that. You can kind of see it right there, the lip. So that's the land you do it. You'll see it in your instructions. Now also, this is our PR valve that we're going to be replacing with a Sonex full-time lube valve. This is a solid valve. It has no holes for crossover. You also want to look here and make sure nobody drilled any holes through here. If they drilled a hole across here for a lube circuit, you want to plug that hole because that opened up a circuit 
to where your converter can drain back to. So that's a no-no. We, you can put a, a small uh, cotter key through there to plug it, which I like to plug it solid because it can still leak by that cotter key. So now we do do some modifications because, man, I really need to show them this, Teresa, but I don't want to change my gloves. Man, oh man. Now we're going to be putting a new uh, Sonex manual valve here too. Take this off. Pull this off. Come on. Now you can see here, uh, yeah, just take that. we have a ball and spring right here for your, your detent on your rooster comb. It goes in here that runs on your rooster comb to go click 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 okay now this uh, ball wears really bad in here egg shaped because of the clicking going backwards and forwards so what we do I'm gonna grab this little thing with my try to wipe some of the dirt off my gloves because we clean all these parts up after I touch them but you got this new little bullet spring piece that goes in here that corrects the wobble here on the end when the ball wears. It uses the whole body of the valve body to control it instead of just this ball here on the end. Okay, so pretty simple. We also, we're going to be replacing this manual valve here with our new Sonex valve. No modifications, you can just clean it up, put it in. Now here's our new PR valve that we're going to be putting in here. Got the check ball in it, there's holes stick this in here really lightly and I'll show you how this look how it looks you can see this land right here and there's a check there's a hole right there it's sealed from here to here and what they do is they add lube through the circuit by that little hole and ball and check ball now once it's off it seals shut no converter drain back now when you put a transgo kit in this valve body along with Sonex parts you're adding two types of corrections to correct the loop circuit. So if I put the Sonex in there and the Transgo, now I doubled my loop circuit. So we got a problem here. So if this tranny gets really hot, towing trailers in Arizona, 110 degrees out, and this guy's pulling his 40 foot fifth wheel behind him, and he comes to a stop, and all of a sudden he feels like the tranny slips for a second when he, puts it, when he tries to take off because we're dumping so much line pressure out of this, off this PR valve into the loop circuit when we use the Transgo kit and we use the Sonex kit. So we gotta figure out, okay, what do I want? Do I want the Transgo or do I want the Sonex? I like the Sonex idea. I like it a lot better to me and this is kinda how I corrected it, okay? I'm going to get some pieces out of this box real quick. I'm gonna take my gloves off and unfortunately, I'm probably going to have to touch some fluid. But this is something that I've been wanting to cover uh, big time. So you guys know when you start adding parts to this stuff, uh, you can get in trouble. Okay. This uh, spring right here, these two springs right here and these two washers right here, are part of the uh, loop circuit and how it holds the spring okay so what we got here is we're going to be putting if I'm not mistaken let me make sure I'm looking at this right because I do so many and you think I'd remember every time but I do so many of everything that I want to make sure okay now what we got here guys this is how this goes on uh, that uh, Transgo wants you to put this on. You put it on like that. You put your little spring there. You put this here. Now what they did is they used this washer to hold this big spring off this PR valve. And they let the little spring float back like that. And when it floats back, it lets this land come on the other side here and give it lube at idle. Now when you give it gas, pressure goes up 
the whole thing moves back. The whole valve moves back. But while it's sitting there idling, it's just sitting there because this is the way it sets in there, it sets in there kind of like that, and they just use that little spring. Well, we don't want two loop circuits. So what we do is we throw we take these two pieces off, we leave this spring on there to keep it centered, and then I grab my little pliers right here and I'll take this spring and I'm going to bend this spring just a little bit and what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten it up around this valve just a little bit where it slides on there tight just like that I'm going to put that spring back in there excuse me that way it keeps it centered on the valve like that and since I took these washers out normally they want you to back this out until this uh, is set in flush. Let me show you. They want this basically, and I tell you, you gotta back this out where this washer is set in flush against this plate right here. If you put it in there right now from the factory, see it's set in a quarter of an inch away. See that? Well, they want you to back this out to where this plate touches this plate right here. Well, since I took these washers out and I'm losing that much spring travel, I'm gonna leave that plate about 40 to 50 thousandths off of this plate here. That way I compromise for leaving this out here. And believe me guys, when I do that and I put my gauge on it, it is dead on. I mean, it works flawless. But I eliminated having two loop circuits in here. Now when this tranny gets hot, 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 it's not gonna try to go to neutral or anything like that when uh, it comes to an idle at a red light when your pressures are down low. So we're, uh, I like the Sonex better. That's why we're going to uh, use it. Uh, but we're going to use the rest of the Transgo kit in the, in the valve body because I like it. So, <coughs> excuse me. But I just wanted to verify that because I've heard talk about this and I've never got to explain it in the video. So. Just remember, if you use a Sonex PR valve and your Transgo kit, you better be careful uh, when you put that together. You need to watch that video and uh, look at it, That because I'm telling you guys, you, you could have a problem. And you're only going to see it mainly uh, when somebody's pulling a big old trailer. They're in Arizona. It's hot, hot out. And, I mean, there you go. Now, if you got a weak pump, you could see it. you got bad, pre low pressure, you could even see it sooner. So. Yeah, he's in Colorado where it's cold all the time. But um, that's just stuff you don't realize when you start mixing shift kits together. Annie? Oh, we might have a mouse in here, guys, stealing some of our AC. Go outside. <laughs> She heard it too, huh? We're going to get our pump out of here real quick. Get our gasket. Get our pump O-ring. Now, you can see how thick this pump washer is right here. That washer is selective. So... You don't want to go much thicker than that. If you go any thicker than that, then you're going to start putting your sealing ring out here on the end of the drum, and you don't want that. So you got to be really careful uh, on tightening these things up. So somebody said, well, I need 10 more thousandths on this shim here. Well, I would rather take it apart and go back with my three tab washer and put a little bit thicker there. But when you do that, you also want to make sure, <laughs> man, there's so, there's so much to this tranny. I could go on and on and on about this one. I mean, this tranny is, is so neat, very interesting to learn. Uh, every time I do one, it's a new day, <laughs> let me tell you. Look at your pump gears really close. You don't see much pump wear on these type of pumps. We'll see it more right in here and here where the converter locks in. We really don't see body wear, side to side wear, or anything like that. Chrysler has a really good pump. so. Look for anywhere here, anywhere through here, here. 
beautiful pump body. Got our dimpled bushing in there. Keeps it bushing really well and oiled. Same way here, looks really nice. Now our shift kit is going to come with uh, high pressure Teflon rings here. You want to make sure you put a new bushing here guys because if you leave an old one in there you can have converter drain back. And remember you got to hit all the spots on this tranny when it comes to converter drain back. When I get done you can set this tranny probably three or four weeks, come back put in gear and it goes into gear. But these trannies, a lot of them, you leave them parked four days, you put them in gear, they won't move. So. This thing's going to pump and park in neutral now. That's going to be a big thing on it too. Now you can kind of see here what I was talking about, how that ceiling ring's running right here. If you're taking to do much more shimming, it's going to get out here on this edge right here. I mean, it's really close to it now. You can see the shadow of the ring, the inner ring, and you can see the shadow of the outer ring, how close it's to that edge right there. So you think about it, if I had 27 thousandths clearance or 30 thousandths clearance, uh, this one actually, we set these at 39, uh, but you, you could imagine this drum still being able to move. And you dang sure want to keep it as close as you can to this ring. So. Of course, you can see our bushing starting to get a lot of wear on it. You also, you notice this bushing right here isn't down all the way in the drum. What I like to do, since we have such a thick washer, I'll take and put my bushing in, and then I'll take and set it on my drum, and I'll look. You notice the bushing is setting perfect. If you knock it down too far, the bushing can physically come in here and it'll rub right here. See, because that bushing, you think about it, look how wide that bushing is and look how wide this is. So if you take and put that bushing down here too far, you think if you put it down in here flush with this, it's going to grind right here. It's going to make tons of metal, wipe this whole land out and everything. So that's why I do that. Pretty simple, guys. Of course, we have our high reverse clutch here. Now we do have a wavy snap ring. We will we'll be getting rid of this and going with a solid snap ring. Um, get a little bit firmer. Third, it will kind of firm up reverse just a little, but it, it, it won't be bad. Now we have a four clutch high gear. Now we will be uh, putting five clutches in this. Anytime you have a high groove drum like this, on a 48, 47, we can add another clutch to this drum. Pretty simple to do. Now here's our three tab washer I was talking about that's uh, selective too. I was talking about instead of changing this, I would take this because they make three different uh, thicknesses of this too. This is the thinnest one they make. So you can add the, the next one up if you need to tighten your clearance up or whatever. Pretty simple. And then we have our forward clutch. Looks really good. Now, on these forward clutches, they make an early and a, a late uh, design teeth. They make a fine tooth and they make a coarse tooth. This is the coarse tooth. Now, they do make a fine tooth. If you if you don't have, if you got the different clutches and, and you have the ring gear, you can change the ring gear out because the ring gear here is interchangeable to a fine and a coarse. So you can swap the clutches out if you know how to do it. So, pretty simple. And then we're going to get our wavy snap ring out of here. You kind of want to keep this snap ring. It is different than this one, but they're both wavy and you might get it mixed up. Just kind of keep that when we do third gear clutch. I like to keep this snap ring here with my bevel plate. Now this here is the weaker bevel plate. Uh, the hole is bigger in here. Uh, the better bevel plate, this hole's half that size. It gives you more strength in the plate. So we will find one. Let me see if I see one hanging around. In my last video uh, before this one on the Dodge, uh, you can go back and see the difference in this bevel plate. They make two different ones. So we got our forward clutch piston. Now these are long cut seals here. If you look at your overdrive piston, you have a short cut seal. 
you got to be careful. These seals will almost interchange. I've seen guys do it. So just remember, short, long for your forward. Now we have our stock input shaft. Now your Transgo kit's also going to come with a high pressure ring here. This is just an old cheap cast ring. I'm going to throw that and get that out of there. You know, already starting to see wear on this side pretty good. But it'll come with a really nice uh, beefy Teflon ring. Now this washer here is also selective. You can move things around with this washer. If you notice, it looks just like that one. Our kit comes with like seven different thicknesses. So now we do have our billet input shaft and drum going in here. That's what this sounds like. Whew. That thing's still ringing. Listen, guys. Difference between billet and cheap. Hear that? Church is in, guys. Listen to that ring. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I gotta quiet that down. But anyway, that's the difference between quality metal and just stock stuff. Of course, we have our intermediate band. Now, you can see here, uh, not much band. They, they use a lot to get the oil off of it. Um, so the band will apply, but you can see from here to here, it's really getting dark. So the band we put in here has got twice as much material, a lot smaller holes, works 10 times better. Now we're going to get in here and look at our lower planetary assembly. Now we can see here we have uh, steel planets. But let me get to another selective place really quick. This uh, snap ring right here is selective. They come in multiple thicknesses to tighten your clearance up in here. So, oops. Now this washer here is probably one of the washers that you'll never replace in your lifetime. I don't even think it ever touches because it looks new every time I pull them out of any tranny. Even the tranny's destroyed, that washer looks new. Now you're going to come in here and look at your six tab washer here compared to you can start seeing the wear. Okay. So you can come in here and buff this up. You can see the factory had a buffing on it. It still looks really nice. Good. Look on both sides of your ring gear for any type of wear. Now this um, planet doesn't have a, this ring gear doesn't have a bushing in here. To keep it from rubbing, it's just got a little plastic washer that sits in there. A little throw in. Kind of, you'd think it'd have a bushing, but they don't. So, now this is our sun gear here. Here we have a four tab washer down here. We, we just have a cheap four pinion planet in the bottom down here. Uh, we're going to update that to a steel. We're going to have to call the customer and see what he wants to do. We can leave it as aluminum because really it is still pretty strong, uh, but we can't upgrade this to a steel. So a four tab washer. Now, this here has the uh, thin shell in it. It's got the early shell. I was talking about our sun gear, sun gear grooves. See the, the thin and the thick? That's if you have a thick and a thin shell, that way it sets in here. See, this is the thin, this is an early. So you just never know until you start taking this stuff apart. You want to look in here and see if there's any wear on here on your inner side or the teeth and outer. Uh, we replaced 90% of them, so we just have them here ready to go. Of course, we have our four pinion planet. Now, this planet physically does not have a thrush washer. You'd think it'd have a thrush washer in there, but it doesn't. The planet is the washer. Now you can start to see some wear right here, starting to see a little lip right there, and there. That's because they use this metal tab or plate as the where the planet runs. Now this plate, when it sets in there, it does not spin. It locks in and stays stationary with the ring gear. See? So the planet does always spin on the plate. So 
we'll get a new planet. I'm gonna call him, talk to him about an upgrade, cause that can be like three or four hundred bucks to upgrade this planet and ring gear and stuff, and a little bit more time to set it up. So, output shaft or, or intermediate shaft looks really good. Now we're not gonna upgrade that to build it or anything. I don't think he's that rough on it. Now if that was a child or younger gentleman driving, I'd be putting everything I could put in this thing. <laughs> and then they could still break it. So we got our reverse drum, our band goes around. Uh, we always see where in here. This is where your uh, cooler line oil comes out of your cooler, straight into here, lubricates this place area first with a cool lubricating oil. And you start seeing the wear right here. Now, our new case support that I showed you earlier in the video uh, will help that and lubricate that better. We have our double wrap band. We have our, right here, our lower sprag assembly here. Should have got the oil off a little sooner, guys, but so just remember when you put these sprags in, the roller always, the spring always pushes the, the roller uphill. So don't make that mistake. I thought I grabbed my three eighths. These bolts here are always going to be gold. I haven't seen one yet that wasn't gold or some type of chrome that holds your case support in in the back. Now you can see this one is plugged since it doesn't have a governor on the output shaft. So the new support, you'll have to put your plugs in to use it. You can see here how these things wear you see where there, all of a sudden it quits touching. And all of a sudden it starts touching. Now we like to come in here and, and drill this hole just a little bit bigger to try to get a little bit more volume of oil in here. So I actually bought 15 of these the other day because they're almost getting obsolete. Uh, Raymond said, Richard is coming again. Better buy some parts. And man, we have been buying parts like crazy guys. But anyway, you can kind of see uh, what a 47 uh, RE looks like. Um, pretty neat tranny, a lot to do to them. And guys, we put parts in all of our trannies. We upgrade, we do everything you could imagine uh, to these units that we can possibly do. If I didn't, I'd be out of here. Believe me, I wouldn't even mess with it. So guys, I wanna thank you for watching. Teresa, you know, always we appreciate you video and you do a wonderful job. Definitely guys, don't forget to subscribe. That 200,000 mark is coming. We, we, we can't wait for the party and we want you guys to be part of it. So go push that subscribe button, that like button, and see you in the next show. Y'all have a great day.